Russia's shifting nuclear doctrine is a stark reminder of the desperation in Moscow. Putin's government is now openly redrawing its nuclear red lines, signaling a far lower threshold for deploying nuclear weapons than ever before. With credibility fading from years of empty threats, the Kremlin is reaching for more drastic measures. Russia's deterrence strategy, once seen as ironclad, now lies fractured by its own inaction. In a recent address, Peter Zihan analyzed this new development, diving into the contradictions at the heart of Russia's nuclear policy. Back on the 26th, 26th and 25th, can't remember the exact date. Anyway, uh, of um, September, the Putin government, Putin himself, announced a new nuclear doctrine for the threshold for when they would actually hit the big candy-like red button. Uh, the Russians are having a problem because they have established all kinds of red lines, dozens of them over the last two and a half years. And then whenever someone has crossed them, whether it is Ukraine in the war or weapon supplies by the United States or Germany or Britain or Turkey, uh, the Russians have ignored their own red line. And so they're having a credibility problem with their deterrence policy. And Putin's announcement uh, last couple days ago was about trying to reestablish that. And he said that now any non-nuclear country who has an ally who is a nuclear country, should the non-nuclear country use a non-nuclear weapon against Russia, that is justified for a, uh, a nuclear strike on the nuclear country that is the ally. The Ukrainian offensive has taken a bold, unexpected turn, targeting not only traditional military assets, but also essential economic lifelines. One of the most significant developments in this ongoing conflict is Ukraine's innovative and relentless use of drones. These unmanned aerial vehicles, UAVs, have become a formidable tool in decimating Russia's critical air bases and oil facilities, forcing the Kremlin to reckon with a threat they never fully anticipated. Recent drone strikes have been a nightmare for Russia, and the scope of Ukraine's UAV offensive is nothing short of staggering. Just yesterday, a Russian oil storage facility was reduced to flames, a casualty of Ukraine's bold UAV strategy. This isn't an isolated incident. It's part of a systematic effort to cripple Russia's war capabilities, targeting both military and economic assets. Two separate Russian oil depots were hit simultaneously by Ukrainian drones, setting a storage base for oil products ablaze in the BAM region. The flames engulfed fuel tanks in another attack at the Vonitz region, leaving destruction in their wake. These precision strikes are not just tactical. They are dismantling Russia's financial backbone piece by piece. Ukraine is relentless in grinding down Russia's oil production, reducing its output and revenue, drone by drone. Each strike chips away at Russia's ability to sustain its war machine, limiting the Kremlin's resources and significantly shrinking their income. It's a slow but effective campaign, weakening Russia from within by diminishing one of its most vital revenue streams. But these drone attacks are not limited to oil depots. One of the most significant blows came when Ukrainian UAVs struck the Borisoglebsk Air Base. Satellite imagery and local reports confirm massive fires consuming large parts of the base, with flames visible for miles around. Local residents described the scene as apocalyptic, with the sky lit up in a terrifying display. The airbase was a critical hub for Russian air operations, and its destruction is a major setback for Moscow's aerial capabilities. The effectiveness of Ukrainian drones doesn't stop at infrastructure. Russian special forces have also been caught in the crossfire, a Ukrainian strike on a civilian building used by Russian special operators near the KSK nuclear power plant killed at least seven Russian elite troops and injured over a dozen others. The location was being used to store munitions, and the precise strike from Ukrainian UAVs turned it into an inferno. While Russia continues to use nuclear power plants as strategic cover for its military assets, Ukraine's drones have proven capable of surgically hitting targets with deadly accuracy, without causing catastrophic damage to the power facilities themselves. These drone strikes go beyond immediate destruction. They are systematically eroding Russia's ability to wage war effectively. By targeting vital air bases and oil depots, Ukraine is attacking Russia's logistical heart. The economic repercussions are profound. For Russia, which relies heavily on oil and gas revenue to finance its military operations, these hits are more than just physical destruction. They are economic blows that will ripple across the entire country. And the consequences don't stop with immediate damages. Russian oil giant Gazprom, once a titan of global energy, has now become Russia's most unprofitable company in 2023. 
thanks in part to the loss of access to key markets and the mounting challenges posed by Ukraine's strategic strikes. Gazprom's net loss has reached a staggering 583 billion rubles this year, with its profitability taking a nosedive for the first time in 25 years. This economic downfall is directly tied to the destruction of infrastructure and the overall disruption of oil exports caused by Ukrainian UAVs. The future looks bleak for Russian military and economic prospects. Ukraine's continued use of drones to strike vital Russian assets shows no sign of slowing down, and with each successful hit, Russia's ability to sustain its war effort diminishes further. While these strikes don't always grab headlines like major battlefield victories, their cumulative impact is reshaping the balance of power in this conflict, and Ukrainian drones are at the forefront of this new phase of warfare. This leads to some unusual occurrences in warfare. For example, a Russian-operated captured striker armored personnel carrier ended up crashing, simply because the Russian soldiers were unfamiliar with how to drive it. This highlights a significant issue. Vehicles, especially foreign-made ones, are not easy to handle in combat conditions unless properly trained, and the Russians, accustomed to their own military vehicles, struggled with this one. If we compare the offensive efforts of both sides in 2023, Ukraine's counteroffensive was highly anticipated, and as a result, Russia had ample time to prepare. Despite months of buildup, the Ukrainian push ultimately failed to achieve its objectives. On the other hand, the Russian offensive, although still ongoing a year later, has yielded only minimal territorial gains. Between October 2023 and October 2024, Russia achieved a net gain of around 600 square kilometers, less than 0.1% of Ukraine's total land area. But the price of this limited progress has been staggering Russia lost over 100,000 soldiers during this period. While territorial changes might seem insignificant on a map, the true cost of the war is seen in the destruction of vital Russian infrastructure. Ukrainian strikes have targeted key oil-producing facilities, air bases, and other critical sites. This strategy weakens Russia's ability to sustain the war effort, far beyond just gaining or losing meters of land. One of the more devastating strikes by Ukrainian forces was the successful destruction of the Russian Nebo-M radar complex. Each system costs around $100 million, and Russia now has just 10 left in operation. Despite claims that these radar systems can detect stealth aircraft like the F-22 and F-35, there is skepticism about their actual effectiveness, especially after such a high-value system was taken out by Ukraine. Moreover, Russia has introduced the FAB-9000 gliding bomb, a relic from the Soviet era. Weighing a massive 9 tons, this bomb creates immense destruction. While Russia continues to face challenges with precision-guided weaponry, it compensates with sheer volume, producing explosives in vast quantities that are difficult to disrupt through sanctions. Despite Russia's increasing losses and limited territorial gains, it has demonstrated a capability to manufacture significant quantities of ammunition. This is where the strength of its domestic production comes into play, allowing them to maintain a supply of explosive devices even if they lack cutting-edge precision technology. Finally, the war has also underscored Russia's vulnerability in regions outside of Ukraine. Russian military assets in the Middle East, for instance, have come under fire, signaling that the consequences of this conflict extend well beyond the immediate battlefield. If you found this analysis insightful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more in-depth breakdowns on the ongoing conflict. Stay informed as we continue to track the developments and their global impact. Your support helps us bring you accurate updates, so hit that notification bell to never miss an upload. Thanks for watching.